Hey guys, it's Cece here and today I'd like to show you how to create this boho wall hanging. The thing I love about this pattern is it doesn't use much string and it's pretty straightforward for anyone to make, so let me show you how it's done. Today's wall hanging project I'm using this beautiful grey coloured cotton cord. It's a single strand twisted cord in a 5mm, however you could use anything between a 3mm all the way up to a 6mm and that would also work just fine. I'm also using this really cool piece of driftwood that I found just down at the beach. Um, but you could use a dowel from the hardware store or even a stick from your backyard, anything will do fine. Now I am going to work in sections throughout this video and I will mention what materials I'm using for each section as I go. However, if you are looking for a full list of materials that you'll need for the project, just check out the list in the description below. So for the first section of the project, we're going to be creating the middle part of the wall hanging. And what you'll need for this section is eight strings cut to one meter in length, as well as one string cut to about 50 centimeters in length. So what we're going to do is take our one meter cords and just fold them in half so you found the center point and then create a lark's head knot over the top of your piece of dowel or stick or whatever you have. And you want to complete this for all eight strings that you have until you have them lined up across the center of your stick. So when you finish attaching all your strings to your stick, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now we're going to create a row of square knots using all of the strings in our group. So to start, we're just going to use the first four chords in our group and create a one square knot. Now, if you don't know how to create the square knot, I do have a tutorial online, so make sure you check that one out. But we're just going to create one square knot with every four groups of chord. And you should end up with a row of four square knots that looks like this. Now we're going to create another row of square knots that sits underneath using an alternating square knot pattern. And I'm just going to miss the first two chords in my group and then move on to the next four chords and create my square knot with these four. And then just continue along the row, creating a square knot with each group of four chords. Now you'll be left with two chords on the other end of your work, that's fine. You should have another row with three square knots. Now again, we're just going to repeat that step, taking two chords to the side and creating a row of square knots using every four chords in the group. And you only want two square knots in this row, so I'm just going to flick them to the side so we don't get confused. And again, flicking another two to the side. This will be our last square knot with four chords. In the middle like so. And you should see now that you should be left with a cute little triangle pattern of square knots like so. So now we're going to use some double half hitch knots to create a line in our work underneath the triangle. So to start, just take your first chord in the group and hold it on a diagonal downwards across your work. Now take the next chord and we're just going to create the double half hitch knot around this chord like so. Now, if you don't know how to do this, I do have a tutorial, so make sure you check that video out. I'll leave the link in the description below. And you're just going to continue to create 
double half hitch knots using each cord in the group consecutively as you work down the line. And you wanna do that until you get to the middle point here. So you will have created seven double half hitch knots, like so. Now we're just going to repeat that on the other side using the last chord in our group and holding that chord across your work. So you should be left with something like this. And then to complete your triangle, you're just going to use one chord and create a double half hitch knot with the other chord in the middle. And you'll end up with a completed triangle. So now we're going to create another line using the double half hitch knot. But as we work down the piece, we're going to gather all the other strings with it. You'll see what I mean as we go. So taking that first chord in the group and holding it up against the other line that you've created in the previous step. And then we're just going to take that second chord and create a double half hitch knot. Now, instead of leaving that chord off to the side, we're going to pick that one up and bring it together with our filler chord. And now that's going to become a part of our diagonal double half hitch filler chord. So again, with the next chord in the group, I'm going to create a double half hitch knot, but around the two chords, like so. Again, I'm going to take this chord and bring it into the group and then grab the next chord in the line and create a double half hitch knot around the three chords, like so. And I'm just going to continue working in this way, gathering all my strings together using the double half hitch knot. And you should be left with something that looks like this. So you can see that all of the strings on the side have been gathered in and now they're all sitting in the middle here like so. Now I'm just gonna repeat this on the other side. So now you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. And all we have to do now is grab that 50 centimeter piece of cord and create a wrap knot around all of the strings to bring them together neatly at the end. So what I like to do is turn my piece around and work from the back just so it stays neat at the front and create my wrap knot around all of the strings like so. So now I just like to lightly pull on all of the ends so they sit neat inside the wrap knot. And then I'm just going to cut them into a little tassel. Then what I like to do is just grab a brush or a comb of some kind and then just brush out the tails to give them a nice full tassel effect. And there we go, there is our middle part of our wall hanging. So now that we've finished our little middle portion of the wall hanging, we're gonna move on to doing some detailing in the sides. And what you're going to need for this section of the project is eight cords cut to three meters in length. So what we're going to do again is just grab each of these cords and find the center point and then just larks head them onto your dowel.
You want to have four strings sitting on the left of the middle section and four strings sitting on the right of the middle section. Now you want there to be a little bit of a gap in between the center piece and your four strings on the left and the right. So I've just shuffled mine so they're sitting quite close together and there's an even gap in between the two parts. Now we're just going to start by working on the left side and creating a, a gorgeous little panel that will sit on a diagonal down into the center of the piece. So to start this next section, you want to take the first four chords in your group and just create a square knot. And then get the next four chords in your group and create a square knot with these as well. Now we want to get the middle four chords and create a square knot which sits underneath the two that are above it. So I'm just creating that square knot that sits in the middle like so. I'm just going to repeat this over and over again for the length of this panel. So I'll speed this up now so you can see what the finished product will look like. So I've just repeated that step enough times until I have a length uh, that is long enough to sit underneath the middle part of my wall hanging like so. So now I just need to repeat exactly the same thing on the other side. So you can see here that I have completed both sides to the same length. And the way that I like to check that is to just count how many square knots I have on one side all the way down and then count on the other side and make sure they're the same. So I've made sure that the length that I have is the desired length that I need when I pull them together. So you can see that it frames that inside part of the wall hanging really nicely. So now what you need to do is take two chords from one panel and two chords from the other panel. The two chords are on the inside and then we're just going to attach these by creating a square knot with those four chords. So I'm just going to make my square knot like so, and then pull that tightly right up so that the two panels then come together in the center and sit like so. Now I'm going to create a little triangle out of square knots just to finish off this section. So what I'm going to do is take these four chords and just flick them off to the side and then take the next four chords in the group and make a square knot with these four and then move along to the next group of four and make a square knot with those four and then I'm going to find the very middle four chords and create a final square knot at the bottom with those four chords. So now we're going to just add some fringe to the sides of our work. And I've got a big bunch of chords cut to about 50 centimeters in length. Uh, it's really good in this situation to use maybe the ends that you've cut off previous projects. So it's a great way to use that kind of leftover string. But all we're going to do is grab one of the short strings and find the little hole that is in the side of the panel just here. And then we're going to feed the little loop from the string through that hole and create a lark's head knot around the string like so. So it'll end up sitting like this and you can usually squeeze two lots of fringes inside each hole in the piece. So I'm just going to take one string at a time and just feed the strings into these little holes in the side and create my lark's head knots 
all the way down the length of the panels on both sides. Alright, so here is the finished piece with all of the fringe put on like so. So you can see that it creates a really nice full effect for the piece. And you can just leave it as it is, or you can also trim the fringe to your desired length. And also what I like to do is grab a comb and brush out the ends like what we did with the tassel. So that will give it a really full effect. I'm just going to do that now and then I'll show you the finished piece. So here is my finished wall hanging after I've spent some time just brushing out the fringe and also trimming it to the length that I like. And you can see that if you take a little bit of time to brush out the fringe, it really creates more of a boho effect. I think it's a bit more rustic and I really love the effect that it creates. So that's how you create your very own boho wall hanging at home. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. All you have to do now is just tie a piece of string to the dowel or stick that you have and then you can use that to hang it up on your wall. I really love to see what everyone's made at home if they've used this tutorial. So please send through any videos or photos that you may have and if you share them on social, don't forget to tag me at notcom. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and here's to finding our peace and creativity. Oh.